My name is Mark Calloway, and I'm one of our business development managers here at Covestic. Just a little about us. Covestic is a full-service consulting firm and Silver ServiceNow partner specializing in customer service management, IT service management, project leadership and delivery, and IT operations. Founded in 2001 with headquarters in Kirkland, Washington, we've quickly grown to over 200 employees delivering services nationally. We have a team of senior level consultants, most with 15 plus years of consulting, process, and technical expertise. Our practical approach and guidance to projects, methodology, and our people-first approach have led us to complete over 100 successful ServiceNow projects with an average CSAT score of 9, and hundreds of clients like you see here who love us. I would now like to introduce James Devine, one of our senior solutions architects here at Covestic, who focuses on customer service management and customer experience and will lead us through the rest of the presentation. All right, thank you, Mark. Uh, oh, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. Uh, like Mark said, my name is James Devine. I'm a senior solutions architect here at Covestic, and I head up our CSM practice. I've been implementing ServiceNow for a little over seven years at this point. So I've been in IT for over 25. Uh, for the past two and a half years, I've been focused primarily on implementing customer service management. Uh, which is what we're going to be covering today. A little bit about uh, our experience with uh, CSM. Covestic has been a design partner with the business unit at ServiceNow since the, the very beginning, the earliest days of, of CSM. Uh, we're continuing to work hand-in-hand -hand with their development team. Actually, you can look at several factors, uh, several uh, um, features that are now part of the CSM tool set that come directly from something that my team has built uh, or a recommendation that we've made. Uh, we're pretty excited about that, that partnership and look forward to continue in the future. Uh, so enough about, uh, about us. Let me give you a quick overview of today's agenda. We're, we're going to talk about uh, what customer service management means, and then we'll talk briefly about ServiceNow and its capabilities, and then we'll get into uh, some of the results that we've seen from the projects that we've done with this, and we'll give you a little case study uh, of the project that Epicor Software did with implementing these practices and the tools. So let's get started. What is CSM? Is this another buzzword in the industry? Uh, well, maybe, but it's also the moniker that we've given to the service management approach to customer service. Um, that's a, an easy thing to say, but there's a lot of depth involved with type, talking about applying service management practices to the customer support uh, area. Um, all right, so let's talk about one term that is thrown around a lot in the industry, and that's effortless. Uh, oftentimes, people take a fairly narrow view of effortless, and they think that it intends to minimize the impact to customers when something breaks or goes wrong. So uh, oftentimes, we use the word effortless to talk about things like better self-help or support chat or any other means to engage faster or more easily when something breaks. Uh, but I think the true idea of effortless is to be, be proactive and prevent the issues from ever happening to begin with. And what we see today in the industry is that most organizations work with a very reactive and break-fix mode where uh, they staff call centers with agents whose primary job is to handle intake for customer issues, do their best to resolve them, and then move on to the next. And what we see is that very little, if any, energy is put into solving the root cause of the issue, um, and there's very little tie-in with operations, and usually the tools and the processes in most organizations actively prohibit uh, close ties with, with operations or development in order to be uh, more more uh, proactive. So, you know, there's hard and fast walls in most organizations that separate customer support and operations, and the goal of CSM is to uh, destroy those walls. Uh, the IT world uh, with ITSM and ITIL practices have uh, been through a transformation over the past uh, 15 to 20 years, uh, getting away from break-fix models and being proactive uh, by using a lot of uh, service management practices, and these come from ITIL, which we'll talk about here in, in a few minutes, 
Uh, and we think that this is just one of the benefits that we get from implementing a service management ITIL approach into customer service. Now, we also know that a lot of people who are not from the IT area, when they start hearing words like ITIL get thrown around and we, they start thinking that we're talking about technology, uh, but really these practices have always been around being customer centric and making sure that we're making the right measurements to improve overall experience, not just break fix. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, bringing these types of, of processes to customer service, it, it really is a, a no-brainer because it leads to better product quality, lower call volumes, greater customer loyalty and retention, support costs go down, uh, bottom line improves. Um, it's, it's a very um, uh, a win-win all the way around, but it does take a transformation with both processes and tools, and sometimes even the politics within an organization. And we recognize that. And uh, you know, we're going to talk about not just the tools here. Uh, you know, ServiceNow is a fantastic tool, but we're also going to talk about the processes uh, involved with going to a true service management-enabled uh, customer service approach. All right, so what is service management? Uh, well, let me give you a quick history of, uh, of ITIL. Uh, about 30 years ago, a little bit more than that at this point, uh, a group of private and public organizations, including the British government and IBM and some other large organizations, decided to get together and collaborate on coming up with the best practices for how to run IT organizations within their different businesses and organizations. Uh, what came out of that is known as ITIL, and it's a series of, of books and certifications uh, that detail best practices. Uh, among the core principles of this is treating everyone that interacts with IT as a customer. Uh, so it's been customer-centric since its earlier days. So whether they're internal users or partners or even other departments, the, uh, the whole idea is to treat everybody as a customer and, and act our, create our business around that accordingly. So it comes with a host of tools, metrics, uh, service level management, all to ensure that we're giving maximum value to everybody within and without the organization. Uh, like I said, most of these are not specific to IT. You know, the idea of setting uh, service level agreements is certainly not anything that is IT related, but being able to say that, hey, we can give you a realistic expectation that when you submit an issue, we're going to be able to respond in this much time and we're going to resolve it in that much time, and then we are going to measure ourselves against that. Uh, it's certainly not anything that is IT specific, but it is something that uh, is very useful in customer service. A lot of organizations do this already, uh, but we're uh, looking at ways that we can take that to the next level. Continual service improvement. This is one of the areas that I uh, tend to get onto my soapbox quite a bit on. Uh, always get better. You know, it seems like a very simple concept, but ITIL recognizes that it's so important that they devote an entire book to uh, establishing CSI as a central part of your service management processes. They do this because they think that everything that you do should have some sort of, of actual process dedicated to uh, improvement from the very beginning, that it's not an afterthought. So from a customer service standpoint, um, Currently, it, the model is almost universally engage, diagnose, fix. So somebody calls, they have an issue, we diagnose the issue, we fix the problem, we go on. Uh, adding CSI into the mix is an uh, entire process that changes it to engage, diagnose, fix, improve. And if every, part of your, every call that you take has some element of improvement, even if you're just improving your processes by 1% a day or a month even, you are going to see huge returns over the over the long term on uh, improved quality, uh, simplified use, lower call volumes, all that sort of thing. It's, it's really uh, something that should be foundational to everybody's processes. I'm going to talk a little bit about the ServiceNow capabilities. Yes, this is a ServiceNow demo, and uh, many of you are already ServiceNow users, so you may recognize uh, the form that you see here. This is just a snapshot of the case form. Uh, it's probably very similar to what you've seen in the past uh, with incident management. Uh, so if you are coming from that background, then you will see that there are some familiarities. Uh, but uh, the case form and the case business uh, data model actually adds quite a bit more uh, customer-centric information that can be tailored to pretty much any business model. So whether it's B2B or B2C, we have a, a data model that supports uh, quite a robust uh, uh, mechanism here to do things like 
entitlement verification. So as soon as somebody calls in, we're checking to see what contracts and entitlements they have. So we know a, if we're supposed to be providing service to them, if they're under support contract, and if they're not, we know to uh, refer them to other account managers. We know uh, what partners they're supposed to be working with. Most of this information is coming directly from the accounting system, so it's live in real time, and it's based off of actual signatures, not necessarily coming from uh, the CRM tool. It really depends on the organization, but that's what we find in most cases. Uh, we can pretty easily manage the partner access, and we can actually assign a specific account teams and individuals to customers. So um, one of the beauties of this, business, of this data model is that it was built from the ground up by people who had a pretty hefty experience at other big players in the CRM industry, and they wanted to be able to build something clean from the, from the very beginning, and uh, ServiceNow CSM has been the beneficiary of that. Um, so that's, uh, that's just the case form, and that's one of the elements of customer service management, but we also have things like the service catalog, and if you are a current ServiceNow user, then you're probably familiar with the service catalog. It's where we can have uh, structured input forms that are fairly easy to create, and then we can have uh, data uh, workflows in the background that will actually take care of the fulfillment of that. So I oftentimes use the example here of the address change because I actually had a horrific customer experience last year where I was trying to deal with a, uh, a certain utility and I was trying to get a, uh, a simple address change done and it took several calls over two months and me even losing my cool with the agent a couple of times because they did not have the tools and capabilities to do something that I considered to be very simple. Now, in, service, in the ServiceNow world, a, it took me about two minutes to create that form that you see there. Uh, on the back end, there could be a workflow, and if you're not familiar with ServiceNow's workflow, each of the activities that you see there in the bottom right uh, is either a task or an integration or an approval, and we can actually automate the entire process so I could actually come to the portal myself as a user, I could submit a, uh, uh, an address uh, change and it would automatically be done in milliseconds requiring no, no human intervention and it would certainly avoid all the angst that went into my experience. Uh, and that's just one of those simple things when you're looking at continual service improvement and you're seeing that 20% of your calls coming in are for something like an address change which can be regulated and, and implemented through a workflow, it's very easy to implement that and then we create a lot of value for our customers and you know, we're trying to get to effortless and we want to get there by making uh, interacting with us as a business as easy as possible. Yeah, so that's, that's uh, just some of the Core capabilities, there's quite a bit more. Uh, we're not necessarily going to do a full demo today. Uh, I'm just giving you a little bit of a teaser. If you are not uh, familiar with ServiceNow's capabilities and you would like to see more, uh, we, were, we would be more than happy to set up a time to talk with you individually about that. Uh, just a little bit more about some of the other tools that we have. Uh, this uh, is an example of a service portal. Uh, the service, uh, service portal uh, functionality in ServiceNow has matured a great deal over the past few years. It's gone from uh, something that was a little bit unwieldy to something that is now very easy for uh, virtually any UX developer to be able to create very robust uh, user interfaces. And uh, you know, all of this is built on top of the, the functionality and the data model. So we can very quickly create uh, UIs for the customers that are um, uh, as, as intuitive and elegant as you would want them to be. Uh, we also have um, a lot of uh, collaboration tools, such as integration with social media. So if you want to um, uh, monitor Twitter or LinkedIn for uh, any messages being posted about your organization, you can certainly do that. You can automatically create cases for that based off of the account. Uh, we have collaboration tools internally to support things like the live chat. We can have multiple uh, people throughout the organization collaborating on a case at the same time if we need to pull in uh, level two or level three people without having to escalate it. We have a lot of really cool tools around that. And then uh, we also have performance analytics and reporting capabilities that probably exceed any of the tools that you're working with today. Um, and we're going to be talking in just a few minutes about a project that uh, Kavestic was uh, fortunate enough to be a part of. And if you talk to the project sponsor, who even after all the, uh, the technical implementation and all the success they had, what he sees as the biggest value of it is the metrics that they are now able to get that they could never get before. And using ServiceNow's performance analytics has really given him power that he never had uh, to, to make a case to the rest of the business on ways that they can improve.
All right, so let's talk a little bit about Epicor. Epicor Software is the sixth largest manufacturer of ERP tools. If you haven't heard of them, then that's probably because you're not in one of the industries that they cater to. They are very big in niche industries like uh, plumbing and uh, retail point of sale and um, uh, lumber yards and that sort of thing where they make specialty software for those, uh, for, for that management. Uh, a few years ago, uh, even before ServiceNow CSM was a product, they started evaluating whether or not they wanted to take a service management approach to their customer service. And they did that, and we had actually been working with them prior to it, and uh, we were involved with the early discussions about how they would accomplish that, uh, we as in Kavestic. And uh, over you know, a period of about nine months, we helped uh, them decide on the right way to go, and then ServiceNow uh, became the right platform to do that through a uh, you know a long uh, collaboration that was also there. Uh, so we we set out to deploy case management for customer issues. Uh, we also created a service catalog for customer facing requests. Uh, implemented knowledge base. Uh, we did this all on top of an ITSM capability, and then combined the portal into uh, one one unified um, portal for all the customers. Now I should say that this organization, it's a billion dollar company, they have 83 different product lines. Uh, so this, uh, the fact that they had grown over acquisition over 25 years meant that they had very disparate processes. They had seven different uh, customer support systems for ticketing that none of them talked to each other. Uh, they have defect management systems that didn't talk to each other or to the support systems. So, you know, implementing what we did here was an effort to streamline the customer service experience so that whether you were calling about uh, the point of sale product or you're talking about a lumber yard product, you were still going to get the same uh, level of support. You weren't going to have any variation. And then at the same time, we were also um, normalizing all the data across the organization so we would know if somebody had multiple products, we, we would know that. We would be able to act accordingly. We could do things like the entitlement checking to make sure they were current on their support contracts. Uh, we, we did a whole, whole uh, effort around just impro improving just the core interaction with the organization, and then we also built in the continual service improvement so that at every step of the way, they were looking at ways that they could reduce costs and improve customer service to, to their customers. So the whole idea of bringing the service management approach into this was to improve the customer service experience. So you know, after what was an 18-month implementation, um, and you see some of the numbers there of what, uh, what all was involved. Uh, it was a pretty massive data cleanup. It was a pretty massive deployment for, from a ServiceNow standpoint. Uh, but at the end of it, Epicor got to see some very nice results. Uh, after the first year uh, after Go Live, they had increased five, five points in their MPS score. Uh, because of reduced customer churn, they actually paid for the entire implementation, that's professional services and licensing, in the first 18 months which uh, means that their ROI was, was off the charts there. They were very excited to be able to say that not only had they streamlined everything that, and improved the customer support, but they had also done it on a, on a, uh, a cost benefit. So then visibly, most visibly, they were also uh, nominated for and received a Stevie Award for customer service as a result of this transformation. Uh, you know, all of this was was above and beyond just the improved customer service uh, that that they received for it. So, you know, it, this has been a project that's been highlighted uh, over the past year and a half as a major success story, and you can kind of see why. You know, they they certainly received um, quite a bit of benefit from taking this approach, and there are actually videos on YouTube of the project sponsor talking about why they chose the service management approach to customer service and, and why ServiceNow was the right choice for that. All right, so I'm not a big fan of just talking to my laptop. I would much rather talk to people in person, so I'm going to turn it back over to Mark Calloway now, who's going to talk about some uh, upcoming face-to-face -face events that I will be at and, and some of our other <laughs> team members will be at, and then after that we'll do some Q&A. Go ahead, Mark. Thanks very much, James. Uh, just to remind everyone, if you have any questions, go ahead and post those into the box uh, that you see there. Uh, before we move on to the Q&A session, uh, I did want to call out uh, these customer service roadshow events on the horizon. Uh, the Covestic and ServiceNow teams are planning some awesome regional events for current and prospective clients to share customer best practices and hear from other organizations who have experienced remarkable ROI 
from switching to a customer service management approach like you heard today. We'll have more details which will be announced soon, so keep your eyes open to see if we're coming to city near you. At this time, we're going to go ahead and begin answering the questions submitted uh, during today's presentation. Uh, as a reminder, you can still submit those through the chat panel on the right-hand side. All right, James, I do have um, one question here came across. Uh, does ServiceNow Customer Service Management integrate with Salesforce? Uh, yes, it, it certainly does and can integrate with Salesforce. The integration capabilities in ServiceNow are, are very robust. Uh, typically, we're doing REST or SOAP integrations, not to get too technical. Uh, but from a can it do that standpoint, yes. The answer is most definitely yes. Uh, but frequently what I see when people start asking about integrating with Salesforce is I start asking about what information uh, is there and is that really the gold source for things like your account master? Do you, do you really want the, the, is the information in, in Salesforce clean enough and accurate enough to match up with wherever we're going to be pulling contract or, or, or customer purchase data from? Uh, so oftentimes what we see is that it turns out that the, the accounting tools, Oracle, SAP, are more likely candidates to be the source of that data. But you know, there are organizations that do have really good clean data in, in Salesforce and other uh, uh, CRM tools that we can integrate with and use either as a, an integration or a migration point. Perfect. Thanks, James. Um, second question. We already have ServiceNow for IT service management. How do we implement uh, CSM without interfering with that? That's a, that's a great question, and there's been a long-standing debate over one instance versus two instances, and I have long been a proponent of the one instance. Uh, as long as you have good architecture and uh, you uh, have not implemented things beyond the bounds of what ServiceNow considers to be appropriate, it's fairly easy to have both ITSM and CSM running side by side, as well as HR and, and facilities and any other functionality. In fact, when you start to do that, you really get a, a lot of uh, uh, momentum by being able to share things like the CMDB across multiple types of applications. And you know, in some organizations, especially high tech and B2B, having that infrastructure there to support customer service is uh, just just a transformational uh, act that you can't get from any other tool. So uh, it's certainly capable of handling everything in one instance. Uh, it does take some some uh, monitoring and some curation to make sure that you aren't uh, crossing boundaries. But ServiceNow provides the framework, and having a good professional services partner will will ensure that there wouldn't be no conflicts. All right. Good advice, James. Thank you. Um, that's all the questions I have. So. Far that's come across. If you have any more, just send those to us and uh, we'll be happy to address those offline with you.